Hey everyone, it's Kamari. How's it going? So, we're definitely stepping it up a notch this week and I hope you enjoyed my previous video on grilling my partner's collection. Yeah, I know I'm not very good at grilling people because I just, I don't like being mean to people so if I was a little soft on my critique of the figures, it's also a case of I like all of my partner's figures so yeah. <laughs> but leading on from that, I thought it would be really fun to grill the rest of my partner's collection and I've definitely left the final two showstoppers for last. These, my partner only has four figures, so this is it after this, um, after these uh, ladies, we have officially critiqued all my partner's collection. I was thinking I would give you my, uh, my opinion on these two lovely ladies. And also as an added bonus this time, I'm actually going to critique the boxes, which I didn't do in my previous video. So first off, we're gonna start with this lovely lady. This is Yun Ni Kui Ling, and uh, she's from Honor of Kings Concert U version, I think, is the, the skin that she's in. Um, so this is a Chinese game, and honestly, there's a couple of figures designed by my ethos uh, from this series, and all of them are beautiful. Uh, I particularly love this design. There were some issues with her when she was originally released um, on the Chinese market. There were some issues of quality control with her face. However, Maithos redesigned the face on the figure and re-issued re the figure. And she looks amazing. She also comes with a little chibi figure uh, that's super cute. And I think that was a really nice kind of way that Maithos apologized for the situation that had happened. We will start by reviewing the box. This is a pretty, iconic design from my ethos. You have the clear plastic box with usually a metallic finish. In this case, it's metallic blue, which matches the color of the figure. And yeah, you've got kind of just general illustrations on the side panels, which look really nice. The clear front so you can see through to the figure. And then you've got this lovely Phoenix pattern on the back. Um, which I think is lovely. I think they've done a really nice nod back to the original figure. There's some uh, text on the top in Chinese, I assume. And then just some kind of basic QS stuff on the bottom. Um, so yeah, it's overall a really lovely box, I'd say. Now, let's move on to the figure. I'm gonna give scores for these figures out of 10 for paintwork, sculpt, Base because I think base is really important on a figure and individuality. I'm trying to get more critical about this stuff because you know these figures they these waifus need grilling. So yeah, in terms <laughs> in terms of the design, I have to give her a ten out of ten. <laughs> so yeah, I'm not I'm not being harsh at all. Let's get real here, uh, but I have to give this a ten out of ten. Like. Oh my gosh, this figure is so dynamic. It's stunning. Like, I love how the phoenix wraps around the main figure. It's just beautiful. Like, it makes almost this like figure of eight shape. And what I love about it is they've used it to kind of give a bit of structural support to the figure. So even though the figure's leaning and has a very dynamic pose, there's no structural support. Like, this is what I want people from figure designers, like figure designers out there, see this and be inspired. Like those stupid little prop stands. Oh my God, no one likes them, okay? Just put in a rock or put in a splash or something to get rid of it, because no one wants to see that. And I love with all of my ethos designs, Honestly, I don't think to date they've had a single figure that has a leg peg or prop or anything. So she's been designed really nicely. Her paint job as well is flawless. Like she looks great. There's like a pearlescent finish on the Phoenix, which wraps around her. And it goes from such a lovely turquoise blue on the tail feathers with the kind of peacock design all the way through to the more transparent kind of white pearlescent face. The figure itself, oh my gosh, the sculpt, the paintwork, all of it is fantastic. 
I love how they have the kind of leaf-like uh, pieces of fabric coming off her sleeve. Her weapons look great too. They even have a color transition and even some glitter because, you know, this girl will be fancy. <laughs> In the kind of the main body of the arrowheads uh, of her shooters, or oh, crossbow, that's it, for her crossbows. And the fact that she even has this like headpiece that is like made out made up of phoenix feather tails which matches the phoenix wrapping around her like oh my gosh like this is like figure perfection like you cannot get a better sculpt and design than this like it is perfection guys the base as well looks so great it's kind of got this swirl like pattern and it's kind of semi-transparent so it looks like almost like water being whisked up in a whirlwind and it also has a color gradation to it because you know my ethos just go that extra mile always so yeah i would say 10 out of 10 for paintwork like 10 out of 10. her face sculpt is stunning however i'm going to deduct one point for the fact that the original issue she had a bit of a derby face the face that they've gone with is really fantastic her hair sculpt is really wonderful they've got a lovely colors on her eyes and they've got this like very peach pink slight gloss on her lips that just looks lovely like she's got such a beautiful face and they've really done it justice in this figure moving on to hinata's box i don't even have space to put hinata the figure on here because this box is so mahusive. I do think the box needed to be this big to a point because the figure itself is quite large, but I do think this is a little bit excessive. They could have they could have been a bit more compact with the packaging. However, when it comes to this box, my gosh, is it beautiful. Look at the photographs on it. Like Henata looks amazing. Like so the moment my partner had this figure, I knew I had to just get the Sakura from the same series. This is from the Mega House uh, DX Girls or Naruto Gals DX uh, series. And so far, if Hinata is anything to go by, this is a wonderful series because Mega House, mwah, you have delivered on this figure. You're nailing the packaging here. Like, this is a beautiful box. So yeah, I love how they've got some gold, like, inlays over the top of the photos. And you've just got the name in, in English as well, which is super rare, like, often it's just in Japanese. So I'm glad that they've made it kind of, I guess, like, English-speaking friendly, these figures. So yeah, and then just the box. I had to actually wipe all of this off because it was a little bit dusty, not gonna lie. It's a really beautiful box, so nine out of 10. Moving on to best girl, Hanata. Okay, sculpt guys, we have to give it 10. Like, oh my gosh, it just, oh, it's perfection. This is Hanata and I think you, there is not more you could want. If you're a Hinata fan, there is not more you could want from a figure than this delivers. Like, it is her to a T. They've nailed her outfit. They've nailed her jutsu. This is jutsu. I think it's jutsu. Anyway, they've just nailed her. And the whole figured sculpture is super dynamic. Like, there is one thing I will criticize Putting this together, my god, was a pain in the butt. Trying to get some of these kind of the the wispy parts on the outside into their slot really took a lot of patience and time. So the Maithos figure is significantly more sturdy than this one. I generally feel very nervous moving her just because I don't want her to come apart. Because I don't want to put her back together. So that is the one thing I would say about this figure. You will cry a bit when you put her together. And then the moment she is put together, you will cry because she's so beautiful. <laughs> so yeah, she is stunning. Her sculpt is stunning, but there were some slight QC issues in terms of the assembly. So she gets nine out of 10 for sculpt. 
In terms of paint job, I would give her a 10 out of 10. You have to give her a 10 out of 10. Like, honestly, her paint job is insane. Like, she looks amazing. Or there, she is flawless in terms of paint paint work. Like the way that they've these kind of swirls around her transition from transparent to purple to blue. The way that her ultimate, uh, what's it called, gentle fist kind of punch with the dragony faces. There like are transparent wisps around it. There's darker blues. Oh, it just it just works. The way that there's kind of an explosion cloud around her. Like, I feel like that's generally overdone on figures, but here it just feels so right. And then we come to Hinata's actual, like, outfit. She looks amazing. The, in fact, in between her zip, her zip is, like, unbelievably well painted, the metallic finish on it. But also, um, she's actually got a top, top underneath her jumper, and it's actual fabric. Like... It, it felt like I was looking at some sort of bunny type fabric and it just looks amazing. In terms of her face sculpt, I would give it a 10 out of 10 because it 100% looks like Hinata. They've even included the kind of pop out veins for her Byaku gun. However, I'm going to deduct one point because she's got quite a big seam hairline above the top of her head. So if that hadn't been there, she would have got 10 out of 10. In terms of uniqueness, I have to give her a 10 out of 10. There is not another figure like her. Let's tally up the points. We'll start with Yunmi Kray. She gets nine out of 10 for face, 10 out of 10 for sculpt, 10 out of 10 for paintwork, and 10 out of 10 for uniqueness. I know I haven't been super harsh here, but honestly guys, she's a showstopper. So she gets and I'm going to give her one extra point because of her price. So she gets 40 out of 42 points. Moving on to Hinata. Hinata gets nine out of 10 for her face sculpt. She gets nine out of 10 for her overall sculpt. She gets 10 out of 10 for paintwork and 10 out of 10 for uniqueness. Now I'm going to give her one extra point because she's waifu. She is one of my favorite character figures. So I think she needs an extra point for that because of sentimental value. I know that's personal to me, so you can deduct that point if you want. So she gets 39 out of 42. Let's talk price of these figures. Yun Ni Kue set you back 94 pounds and 90 pence. So I think she deserves that extra point for her price. Like that is such a great price. In terms of yen, that's 15,700 yen. And in terms of dollars, that's $188.86. Like honestly, a bargain figure for what you get. And also she's massive, just that also has to be calculated into this. Moving on to Hinata in terms of her cost, she would set you back $146.68. In terms of pounds, that's 122 pounds and 55 pence. And in terms of yen, she's 24,200 yen. So she is a bit more expensive. I think she is worth it for her sculpt. It's just my ethos figures are incredibly well priced. Um, but I still think Hinata's great. So if we tally up all the points, my ethos has won by a whisker. I really hope you enjoyed this week, guys. It's been such a delight to just look at these beautiful ladies and give them the lightest grilling ever. But still, I think it counts because I knocked off points. Yep, it counts. So yeah, anyway, I really hope you enjoyed this week. And yeah, I will see you next week. I might have to pre-record next week as I am actually going away, but hopefully there'll be some super exciting content uh, that I will be making for you guys. So yeah. Have a lovely week and take care. Oh, and don't forget to like and subscribe. Do it now, right? Bye guys.